Hi, my name is Brian Kaufman. I'm one of the pediatric orthopedic surgeons at Central Texas Pediatric Orthopedics. We're located in Austin, Texas, and are proudly affiliated with Dell Children's Medical Center of Central Texas and the University of Texas Dell Medical School. There are many different types of surgery for scoliosis. This video is going to focus on a posterior spinal fusion, the most commonly performed operation for idiopathic scoliosis. At CTPO, we always consider surgery, especially for scoliosis, to be a last resort. We know that it's a difficult decision to imagine your child, or you yourself, going through a large spine operation. We typically recommend surgery for scoliosis with a curvature measuring greater than 50 degrees. Based on natural history studies, curves greater than 50 degrees tend to progress even after a child finishes growing. We recommend surgery at this point in order to do our best to preserve motion of the spine and to prevent any further worsening of both a cosmetic and radiographic deformity. We know that scoliosis curves measuring greater than 85 to 90 degrees can begin to affect pulmonary and cardiac function. Because of the difficulty in achieving acceptable cosmetic and radiographic results, we recommend surgery before curves reach this level. On the day of surgery, you will meet your surgeon and the rest of the operative team prior to entering the operating room. Once you go to the operating room, you will breathe some anesthetic gas and go to sleep. IVs are placed after you are asleep. There are no needle sticks prior to you being asleep. After you are anesthetized, a catheter will be placed in the bladder to drain urine. Special stockings will be placed on your legs to prevent blood clots and DVTs. Small needles will be placed into your arms, hands, feet, and scalp to monitor your spinal cord. These needles allow us to check your spinal cord throughout the surgery. We send electrical signals from your brain into your arms and legs to ensure that your spinal cord is working properly. After you are appropriately set up for surgery, you are carefully positioned on your stomach on the operating room table. We are very careful to pad all the bony prominences in your body and ensure that there are no pressure wounds after surgery. Your spine is then cleaned a final time and the surgery has begun. Surgery begins with a single incision in the midline of your spine. After the skin is incised with a small scalpel, the muscles are removed off of the back of the spine in a fashion that limits the amount of blood loss. After the spine is exposed completely, the joints in the spine are removed at each level undergoing fusion. After we have the spine completely exposed, osteotomies are often performed in the back of the spine. An osteotomy involves removing a portion of bone over the back of the spine and over the spinal cord to improve flexibility and allow your surgeon to have a better three-dimensional correction of your cosmetic and radiographic deformity. After the spine has been completely freed and is more mobile, small clamps are placed onto the spine. An intraoperative O-arm CAT scan is then obtained. This CAT scan allows us to perform 3D navigated placement of the screws in your spine. The screws are placed by first finding the anatomic landmarks for the screw, screw's insertion. Your surgeon uses a small burr to create a hole in the back of the spine, and then uses the 3D navigated system to have a real-time projected image of your spine on a screen and can see where the instruments are going as they pass your spinal cord and go into the bones in the front of the spine. After the tract for the screw has been made, the screw is inserted with a special screwdriver. After all the screws have been placed in the spine, two rods are placed on either side of the spine to allow for correction of the deformity. After both rods are placed, your surgeon will work on correcting the deformity through a variety of correction maneuvers. After we have the spine corrected to as close to normal as possible, we will place small screws in the tops of all of these screw heads and lock the rod in place. Bone graft, that is a mixture of bone obtained from your body as well as from a cadaver, is then placed over the entirety of the surgical field to enhance the fusion potential for the spine. Remember, the goal of the surgery is to have your spine fused. After the bone graft is placed, the wound is carefully closed in layers and an occlusive dressing is applied. Once you wake up from surgery, you are transferred to the recovery room, where you then go to the orthopedic floor. You will be in the hospital for two to three days and will work with a team of physical therapists to improve your mobility after surgery. Our goal is to have you standing and walking the night of surgery. Before leaving the hospital, which typically occurs two to three days after surgery, we want to make sure that you are tolerating food by mouth, that your pain is controlled on medication that you'll take by mouth, the same medicine that you take at home, and that most importantly, you and your family are comfortable leaving the hospital. It's also important that we see a return of bowel and bladder function prior to leaving the hospital. The majority of our patients are off of narcotic pain medication by 10 to 14 days after surgery. If your surgery is performed during the school year, we expect to return to school two to three weeks after surgery. In terms of returning to sports and activities, 
It depends on the degree of your surgery as well as your surgeon's preference. In general, a return to white activities is allowed at six weeks to three months, with full return to all activities without restriction by six months after surgery. At CTPO, we have partnered with Dell Children's Medical Center to build an inclusive and all-encompassing team working around your child for spine surgery. We're fortunate that all members of this team work to maximize your child's recovery and ensure that we have the greatest degree of success with every child undergoing surgery. Your surgeon will always function as the lead of this team. We believe, however, that the surgeon is only one member of that team, and it's important for us to solicit the advice and suggestions of other members of our team. A nurse at CTPO works closely with your surgeon to guide you through the preoperative process. Our nurses help in obtaining any necessary pre-procedure imaging studies, such as a CAT scan or an MRI. Your nurse will also help you schedule preoperative and postoperative appointments, fill out any necessary paperwork for school or FMLA, and serve as a consistent source of information and support throughout your journey. The Spine Nurse Navigator at Dell Children's functions almost as your personal spine concierge. These nurses have a wealth of experience in managing spine surgery patients both before and after surgery. They provide an excellent source of resources for you to discuss your journey through surgery. They will also check on you during the hospitalization and afterwards as well. At Dell Children's, we have a dedicated team of anesthesiologists and certified registered nurse anesthetists, or CRNAs, who work to perform all of our spine surgeries. These anesthesia team members have years of experience in managing spine surgery patients and have helped us perform operations on hundreds of different patients. They're experts in the management of patients during surgery, as well as helping us to manage our pain regimen protocols after surgery. We work with our pain management specialist to treat every facet of pain. Your child will be on a number of different pain medications, all designed to maximize comfort and improve functionality after surgery. Ultimately, our goal is to limit the amount of narcotics we provide your child and to get your child off of these strong pain medications as quickly as possible. The unsung heroes of our operating team are the circulating room nurse and the scrub technician. These individuals work tirelessly to set up our rooms for surgery and assist us during the procedure. The surgical technician is in the procedure with the surgeon and helps us to organize the number of instruments we use during the procedure and to pass instruments to the surgeon. The circulating nurse is your point of contact on the day of surgery and will reach out to you throughout the procedure to update you on how the surgery is going with your child. We have a small group of nurses who have received additional training in managing spine surgery patients postoperatively. These nurses are incredibly dedicated and our patients frequently rave about them. I think it's totally fine to brag about them. They really are that good. Our physical therapist will help get you moving after surgery. Remember, our goal is to have you up and walking the night of surgery. The therapist will also guide you on what movements are and are not allowed after surgery. It is rare that a child requires therapy as an outpatient after surgery. The majority of our spine surgery patients are able to achieve functionality without the aid of outpatient physical therapy. As one of my favorite patients never fails to remind me, our children with scoliosis are bent, not broken. Know that the team of physicians, physician assistants, nurses, therapists, and everyone else are behind you in your journey through spine surgery. If you have any questions about the process of spine surgery or any other questions regarding the treatment itself, please feel free to reach out to our office at your convenience.